Hi there, this is Salt Your Own from Salt Your Own Films and welcome to our random review. Today's random review comes from 1977 and it's Damiano Damiani's Goodbye and Amen, released by Radiance. And um, this is one of their new releases. This is spine number 38 already. Can you imagine it? I remember back in the days when it was spine number one from Radiance. Um, this is spine number 38. Um, as usual, there's a booklet and reversible artwork. Um, this stars Tony Missanti, um, Claudia Cardinale, and Dynasty's own John Forsyth. Um, this is obviously his turn at appearing in Italian thrillers. Now, obviously, Damiano Damiani. Um, it's familiar with Radiance fans for having um, arguably the box set of the year, the Cosa Nostra Frank Nero set, um, with The Day of the Owl, The Case is Closed, Forget It, and How to Kill a Judge. Um, I also did a random review of Damiani's I Hope Horror, or I Am Afraid, um, with Volonte. Erlen Josephson and Mario Adorf, which, if anybody's listening from Radiance, please can we have this in the Blu-ray, because um, this is just a DVD. This is a wonderful film. Um, again, it's an Italian film from the 70s, so you probably know how that's going to end. Um, and of course, Damiani also did Bullet for the General with Volonte and Klaus Kinski. So, if Radiance can just keep um, releasing Damiani films, I'll be quite happy. Um, is Dan Damiani up there with Francesco Rossi and Elio Petri? Um, maybe not, but every film that I've seen of his so far has been wonderful. And um, at least a four-star film out of five for me anyway. But again, my opinion is not fact. So I'm not going to go too much into the plot of Goodbye and Amen. Um, apart from saying this starts off as one thing and then ends up being something else so it kind of starts off as um, a dogs of war kind of film we have this conference with Tony Massanti who works for the CIA um, who is in Italy and they're planning a coup of some nameless African nation. Um, Christopher Walken doesn't come in the room. Um, but they're spooked a little bit by somebody from Africa turning up um, and they think the game may be a bogey. So we cut from that to um, somebody's house who works for the um, American Embassy and he's having problems with his wife and he turns up at the roof of a hotel and starts shooting passers-by. So we're in Dogs of War and then all of a sudden we're, at, we're in a sniper film um, and he ends up taking Claudia Cardinale um, and her um, American actor boyfriend, um, who's not her husband, um, hostage in a hotel room. And then it turns into a hostage siege film. It does eventually come back to Tony Massanti and his um, operation. And it does kind of fit all back together again, to some extent. Um, but initially it's kind of like, oh yeah, we're, we're going to do a Dogs of War, but then, yeah, we're not really. Um, so it, it does kind of 
give you a moment to pause. And again, I'm not going to go into all the little plot points because that just comes together. But again, it's Damiani again. It's perhaps not as overtly political as some of his other films. Um, but it still has that it's about the CIA in Italy perhaps messing around with things to you know gain advantages for their own needs at the cost of everyday Italian people um, so it still has that Damiani political undertones um, so it manages to get digs in at the CIA in America just going around the world and doing whatever they like basically um, it has digs at um, the filmmaking process and the vanity of actors I mean the the actor that Claudia Cardinale is having an affair with is basically not very smart um, and he's just basically there for his looks. Um, originally when we meet Cardinale, she's in a negligee, and I'm thinking, I hope Claudia Cardinale isn't going to be in a negligee for the whole film, but fortunately she does put a dress on at one point, because um, we wouldn't want that. It's another wonderful Damiani film. Again, I'm not going to go into every single plot point. Um, the cover does give away a wonderful kind of ending as how the the shooter plans to get out um, and away from this situation. There's lots of, not lots, but there's quite a few little red herrings. Um, there's a wonderful scene involving cornflakes. Um, it has... tension. It has some really clever little um, parts. Obviously the the ending escape from the tale is very clever um, as well. Um, the film um, on the release, there's a 110 minute version, which is an Italian version, and a 102 minute English language version, um, which is missing pieces, but they included it just kind of for Interest. I don't know why anybody would want to watch the English language version, but there you go. Um, this is a Region A and a Region B release. It's the 2023 restoration. Um, there's a commentary by Eurocrime experts Nathaniel Thompson and Howard S. Berger. There's an interview with editor Antonio Cesiano. That's a butchering. Um, which is maybe 39 minutes. And there's an archival interview with Wolf... Wilfango Soldati, um, who plays the gunman. Um, there's new improved English subtitles for the Italian um, version, and of course, um, there's a booklet including writing by Italian crime cinema expert Lucia Rinaldi. So, again, not going to go into the plot too much, um, but again, it is an Italian film. It was made in the 70s. So that should give you as much of a clue as you need about the tone and the overall message um, and denouement um, at the end of the film. Because that's where denouements generally go. Um, Tony Musante is his usual brusque himself he's defiant because um, his boss is always trying to replace him um, because he feels he's botching this job just like Beirut it's almost like the line in Predator trying to forget Afghanistan um, it's it's another wonderful Damiani film um, John Forsyth um, of course this is before Dynasty and he gives a wonderful performance as a stiff ambassador. Um, and Claudia Cardinale um, is wonderful 
as always. Um, you know, she has. Um, spoiler alert: she does have chances to escape, and perhaps sometimes doesn't use them um, until the correct moment. Um, she's level-headed, whereas her her actor hunk is a bit useless. Um, yeah, it's another wonderful Damiani. And as I said, if anybody from Radiance is listening, can we have uh, Yeehaw Hao Power? And you might as well throw in Francesco Rossi's The Matai Affair as well. Um, while you're at it, I think that would be suitable. In fact, every Jan Maria Volonte, um, We Still Kill the Old Way by Petrie, that would be, that'd be good as well. Um, so thanks very much for watching. I apologise for the fact I haven't went into every plot twist and turn um, because I don't think that would be um, fair but it is well worth picking up. I would highly recommend it. It's one of my favourite Radiance releases um, and that's saying something because they have had a fairly spectacular um, first 13 months. Um, yeah, once again, I apologise for not going into too much detail in the film, apart from to say it's awesome. So thanks very much for watching. Please let me know if you've seen Goodbye and Amen and what you think of it. And hopefully you'll join me again for more random reviews. This is Saul Chironin from Saul Chironin Films, saying farewell. <laughs>